Welcome back to Exploring Whiskeys. I'm Eric. I'm Kevin. And today we're going to be jumping right into uh, well, a, a local. local. Yeah. We think. <laughs> we know it's Tennessee whiskey. We know it's all local type, they, you know, they, they, grains they, and sourced grains. all locally. Don't exactly know where they're doing the distilling. The heirloom, so, heirloom corn is with yep. it. And that's the, apparently that's the oldest in yeah, the South. Yeah, one of the oldest Southern grains there is. Yep. So this is Fugitives Tennessee Artisan Spirits is the name of the distillery. And this is the Grand Gorsier Tennessee Whiskey. This is the single barrel edition. Uh, this particular bottle just showed up at my door like two, <laughs> uh, like two weeks ago. Our friend Mike Chadwick dropped it off. He really enjoyed it and said, hey, you guys, you guys need too. to try this. So thanks, uh, Mike. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but like we were mentioning, that it's kind of funny. They don't actually have their own distillery. They're they renting. They're renting space. They have their own still, but they're just right. they're renting space. At they're doing else's distillery. yeah. They're doing all the distilling. They're picking their own grains. They're not outsourcing any of it. But it's not their distillery. They just have a like an 850 gallon pot still mm -hmm. that they're leasing, renting. What I don't know how you, how that works with pot stills. <laughs> They filter theirs through the Tennessee sugar maple yeah. charcoal. It's known as the, the Lincoln County process. Yeah, it's similar to what like Jack Daniels, Daniels does and Dickel, and, uh, Uncle Nearest. The, you know that yep. that Lincoln County process of of filtering, but they are using a sugar maple and not all. I think they use different ones each each of those distilleries. It is grainy, very corny. There's yeah, <laughs> yeah. That the grain really comes through, and I, I think that's this is now the We'll call it the third-ish, third artisanal type whiskey that we've done. This one smells just like when we did Revival. The one out very of Char similar. Charleston, yep. South Carolina. Very similar. Same shape. Yeah, bottle, it's a very similar much. bottle. Everything's locally, the grains yeah. are all locally sourced. Right. Yeah, the, the local organic, more artisanal type. But there's a lot of corn. It's very sweet. Maybe a little bit of a fruit. That it's very grain forward. It's not offensive to the nose the way that <laughs> Jephthah is. <laughs> <laughs> Jephthah's just offensive all the way through. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but 96 proof for the single barrel. Um, I say there's more. There's well, I've just I've tasted it, but okay. There's more on the nose than there is on the taste. To me, the taste is Flattens just out. corn. It's not bad, um, but there's more. It's kind of surprising that you get more off the nose. At least for me. It ends quickly. There's an initial nutmeg. Mm. Like that first, when it, as soon as it hits your tongue, it's a little overpowering of a nutmeg note, and it stays there. It's just sweet. And everything and else kind of is sweet and just kind of tapers away. The minty, nutmeg. Minty at the end. Sits right on the front of my tongue. Yeah, there's a little bit of mint, like menthol. Yeah, at the end. <laughs> yeah. But again, it dries up. I mean, it doesn't dry. It's just sweet and smooth all the way through. But the finish just disappears. Well, I'm going to... So, of the three artisanal ones, I'd, uh, this is probably the yes. best of the three artisanal ones that... Uh, yeah, well, Jeff, uh, we, we beat that one up pretty solidly in the show, <laughs> so I don't need to get into that anymore. But even like the, that Southern Revival one is a, it was super... And they, like, have, they have two more out. So yeah, I went to the store the other day. You know, one is 100 bucks. I'm not sure I'm going to... Yeah, not after we, it wasn't a... If it's available for at the, the tasting bar... I'm in, I'm in, and if I like it, then maybe I'll consider it. But that's pretty steep, based on the review of the one we've already done. Yeah, but no, this I, I enjoy this. That's no, good. Yeah, it's different. It's not because you know. All right, so it's a Tennessee whiskey. So you compare it to a Dickel or a Jack Daniels or even Uncle Nearest. It's a very different flavor mm -hmm. profile. It's a little bit more bourbony. Yeah, uh, of the notes and the spices that come through versus the. That super filtered, that's that's when I have Jack Daniels, like that's kind of what I, it always tastes filtered, like overly muted. This does not, there's not a mute to this. It's, mm -mm. and that's sweetness, man. Yeah. It just stays, it's just sweet, yeah, and smooth, very, all the way very through. sweet, like honey or some, some kind it's of a 90, syrupy. And it's 96 proof. I mean, you not, not a lot of heat. Not, I mean, it's yeah, a little warmth, but not a lot of heat for 96. It doesn't, it doesn't hit you no but out of the three we've done this is by far the best it is thanks 
And I, so reading some of the, there was a big interview when they first released their, the, this very first bottle, read through some of that. And the per, the guy was just, he was big into the grains. And I think that seems to be a running theme. So that's all he wants to worry about is the grains. So at some point, does he want to distill his own stuff at his own distillery? Yes. I'm sure. Yeah. But to get all the right equipment to do it right and all, and the building and the, and the space and the, <laughs> It's a lot of capital. <laughs> he said he's run the numbers like 15 different ways, and it's a solid $3 million investment. Yeah. Right. And now it's just like... He'll get there. Or make good whiskey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 get, I get the idea. Make good whiskey. Uh, I just hope they can find a way to up production, because right now, well, they started off only releasing in Tennessee. Which makes sense if you're just starting I out. I think there's... Just started to branch out to a few other places. The surrounding states. Yeah, the surrounding states. And I still don't understand this, like the way they skip, skip. And New York. Apparently, you can get this in New York. Well, that was one we, we just tasted yeah. recently. It was in the Midwest, and then they just jumped to Colorado. Jumped over to Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. It's, it's a little funny. Well, it's those funny liquor laws, too. That's true, too. Yeah, the import of, you know, different states are just easier yep. to do things. So it's not the cheapest bottle. And I think that does go back to the artisanal grains. They're expensive. expensive. You know, if you're if you don't own that pot still and you're renting out the space, I'm sure there's expense to that. Not not as much capital up front, but there's a cost each time you're doing it. So you're looking at a $70, 70, 80 dollar bottle. It's a little steep. It's a little steep, but I kinda like again, the the grain you're you're talking instead of like the yellow dent corn, you're probably talking three, four times yeah, that, the yeah. cost for the same amount of whiskey. So I, I kind of get the, the fact that they need to charge a little bit more to offset. But of all the artisanal ones we've done. This is by far the best. This is the best and worth the investment, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, that, you know, this for 70, 75 bucks, yeah, it, it's kind of a nice thing to just do a nod to a local distillery. There's a number of craft distilleries in Tennessee. Yes. So I'd love to hear Drop, drop yeah. us a comment. What's your favorite yeah. craft distillery in Tennessee? We'd love to hear that. We'd love to get get our hands on some of their stuff. Yeah. Get a little sample on the show. Yeah, I'm really waiting, like, again, once all the pandemic stuff gets over. We got to do, like, a real tour of even just the local ones for Nashville, like mm -hmm. Greenbrier and uh, Corsairs and yep. stuff like that. They're, we should be able to get through those pretty simply. But, yeah, that little list of all the distilleries throughout Tennessee. Memphis all the way over to yep. East Tennessee. We can even throw some of those moonshines in there too. Yeah, there you go. Moonshiners. Uh, kind of our, uh, definitely our <laughs> new obsession on TV is watching moonshiners. If you haven't seen it, it's just wonderful to watch the red, redneck ingenuity of how they put these stills together and produce pretty good. Yeah. Looks like amazing. And the different recipes moon. that they come yeah. up with and play, yes. and play yeah. around with. It's a very cool little little show, but we totally digressed in that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, I'm going to say, it's a good bottle. It's a good artisanal mm -hmm. whiskey. It is something totally different than any other Tennessee whiskey I've ever had. Totally different than most bourbons, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, there's always that argument, is Tennessee whiskey a bourbon? But uh, I'm not going to get into that argument, but it's definitely like a very a whiskey. different flavor profile, but very enjoyable. Yep. But overall, it's just sweet and smooth yep. all the way through. Yeah. With a little bit of a, like a corn grain mm -hmm. note that kind of floats through there. So. Necco wafers? Is that what that, like, there's that weird vanilla Necco wafer thing that. A little bit. There's something right in the middle and I can't place it, but. That's kind of the feeling that I'm getting right yeah, now. Yeah, I can get that a little bit. I used to love those things. <laughs> I don't even know if they still exist. I'm sure they do. No, this is the third craft. Yeah, artisanal. Yeah, artisanal. Again, we'd love to hear if you've got a, a favorite one. Uh, hopefully, we can find. If you do, obviously, drop us a comment. We'd love to yep. go out there and hunt, hunt for it. Hopefully, we can track it down and add it to the list of uh, one of our episodes on the show. But uh, we hope you enjoyed our review of this bottle. If you did, we encourage you to hit that like button at the bottom of the screen. While you're down there, if you could subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we put out a new episode. And hopefully you're uh, 
drinking on something really good, and you can let us let us let us know what you're drinking, and we'll we'll see if we can catch a bottle of that. Yep. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.